This week, the Russian ruble once again weakened beyond the important threshold of 100 to the US dollar. So what's going to happen next? How much more can the ruble weaken? Let's start with a bit of a backstory. So once upon a time, the ruble was actually a relatively stable currency. Then in 2014, Russia invaded Ukraine and that all changed. Seizing Crimea was the first annexation of European territory since the Second World War. So the West, determined to avoid it becoming a broader conflict within Europe, began to apply sanctions to deter Russia from further military action. The Russian ruble quickly lost half its value. Then fast forward to February 2022 and Putin escalated the conflict beyond Crimea and the border regions into a full invasion of Ukraine. Western countries warned Putin and the Russian government for weeks and months before the invasion that there would be consequences if they went ahead. Sanctions, sanctions and even more sanctions. This led to Russia becoming the most sanctioned country in the world. The ruble fell and it fell hard. News reports and analysts were talking about the impending collapse of the Russian economy. But the best part of two years later, and that still hasn't actually happened yet. As expected, Russia was ready to protect themselves from sanctions. Although many analysts like to poke fun at Russia's incompetence on the battlefield, there's at least one institution within Russia that did have a lot of competence, and that's the Central Bank of Russia. It's headed by Elvira Nabulina. She's actually quite well respected and considered to be a very competent central banker, which some might argue is quite rare. She became the head in 2013, which means not only does she now have a decade of experience in the role, but she also oversaw the policy decisions after the 2014 invasion and the sanctions that followed that. Now, at that time, she hiked interest rates, free floated the exchange rates, used currency intervention, and managed to stop inflation from running out of control. It slowed the ruble's collapse, but also did significantly slow the Russian economy. Then in 2022, as Russian troops crossed the border, the central bank was once again preparing to deal with the sanctions that were coming. Russian stocks and the ruble went into free fall and government bonds were rated as junk. But one of the biggest problems they faced was capital outflows, meaning money leaving the country and probably quite rapidly. They'd already faced this issue in 2014, so they introduced policy changes to stop it or at least slow it down. Now, one way a central bank can slow the decline due to capital outflows is by using currency intervention. So for example, Russia could use their US dollar reserves and exchange them into rubles, therefore creating more demand for the ruble, just like they did in 2014. However, this was no longer an option for Russia due to the sanctions effectively freezing their assets and blocking them from international markets. They may have been able to overcome this with the help of some other countries to a certain extent, but not enough to fix the problem. So they took other measures instead. Firstly, they raised interest rates to 20%, an incentive for the Russian population and businesses to keep their money in the country. And secondly, they introduced capital controls, which limited how much Russians could exchange into foreign currency, and they stopped them from moving currency abroad. As part of that, Russian companies also had to exchange 80% of their foreign revenue into rubles. The ruble quickly swung back to its pre-war levels, showing just how much volatility there was. But once it settled down, relatively speaking, it then just steadily continued to lose value and lose value. It's actually quite shocking to see that chart for a currency. So with that steady weakening of the currency and the level it's at now, it would suggest that Russia does in fact still have an outflow problem and may need to take extreme measures to target it. After they raised rates last year, they did actually drop them again. So that gives them some room to raise rates again, which they did do after an emergency meeting in August when the ruble hit 100 against the dollar, which as I said at the start of this video, has happened again this week. But at the moment, the future of Russia is extremely uncertain, as you might expect. They're involved in a high cost, high intensity war. There's no realistic scenario where sanctions will be dropped anytime soon. And there's very little demand for the ruble outside of Russia. So the weakening ruble drives up the cost of imports and higher import costs means more inflation. According to the central bank, inflation is currently around 7% and their target is 4%. 
Who knows if that's really the case? Another problem is that the Kremlin is having to borrow a huge amount of money to fund the war. We're not just talking about having to replace a few tanks here or a few missiles there. If Putin is going to continue this war, then we're talking about the need to build and upgrade entire supply chains. That means significant capital and likely means more government borrowing, which further adds to price pressures. Now, if inflation does stay at higher levels or even rises, then we may see further rate rises, which could slow the decline of the ruble. However, it's a double-edged sword because the higher interest rates are, then the worse the economy is going to perform. The central bank will need to perform this magical balancing act. So unless Putin is going to reduce military and social spending, the central bank is limited in what it can actually do to slow the decline of the ruble. They're pretty much limited to capital controls as we've already seen. This is Russia we're talking about though, and the government will do whatever it can to hide the negative effects of the war from its population, even if it harms itself in the long run. As professor and expert on Russia, Konstantin Sonin said in the Financial Times, that means the central bank could turn to more unorthodox measures. The arsenal of financial repression is essentially endless. So while there doesn't appear to be many positive factors for the ruble at the moment, at some point, Putin may force the central bank and the economy into even more extreme measures.